Alhamdulillah, Assalamu Alaikum. So, as most of you guys, if not all of you guys will know, I left the UK over a year ago and moved to Sharjah with my family. And one of the most common questions that I get asked is why? And that's what I plan to address in this video. But first, let me give you a little bit of context. Apologies for the wind noise, if there is any, by the way. So, before I got married, my wife-to-be and myself had discussed the idea of moving to a Muslim country. We both agreed upon it. However, it was more of, I would say, um, an ideal rather than anything serious. I feel like a lot of us, we romanticize the idea of moving to a Muslim country. It's kind of like, you know how the Westerners, the Kufar, have the American dream? I feel like we have something called the Muslim dream. And moving to a Muslim country is a part of that. Although for most of us, it's just that. Then we started doing Umrah trips with Five Star Umrah and all of a sudden, I was hit with the reality of what it's like to live in a Muslim country. And boy, it was amazing. Hearing the Adhan out loud, hearing the Salah out loud, you know, the safety, the security, you know, I was blessed to be able to take my wife, my son, my mom, my stepdad, my two sisters, my auntie, uh, her husband, their children. I, I got a lot of family members, Umar, alhamdulillah. And honestly, like the fact that I was so comfortable with the women folk being out and about, going to buy food, doing the shopping, going to the masjid for Isha and so on and so forth. I, I never had that peace. I never had that tranquility and that security with my own family that I did in Mecca, Medina, in the UK or any Western country for that matter. And that made me realize this is serious. But there was still no sense of urgency. I was still pretty much tied to the UK. I had my job as a train driver with TFL, family commitments, etc. But the seed had definitely been planted in my mind for real. And then I remember our teacher at the time, Ustad Abdurrahman Hassan, he moved to the UAE. He had a teaching post here in Dubai. He was living in Sharjah. Not too long after that, Saad, Imran's younger brother, he moved as well to the UAE. And back then, if I'm completely honest with you guys, the UAE wasn't really on my radar as a place to live. I had visited before as a tourist. And therefore, when I'm thinking, you know, environment for my children and my family, it wasn't like on the list. I have to keep it real. Then I actually came and visited as a practicing Muslim living in you know an apartment in a residential area from airbnb instead of a hotel in a touristy area you know avoiding tourist attractions and places where you know naturally you're going to find a lot of tourists and i realized wait there's more to this place than meets the eye or that i had at least at the very uh least thought myself and then i remember i visited Sharjah, and i was like okay wow this is the real deal this is somewhere i could definitely see myself living however still no urgency it was just you know, building in my mind, but there was no sense of urgency of I need to leave. Then my wife fell pregnant with our first child. And I remember I was sitting in Slough in the living room of our apartment. And out of nowhere, well, out of nowhere, suddenly it just hit me like a ton of bricks hit me for six. It just, I was just like, there's no way I can raise my children in this country there's just no way i feel like up until that point i hadn't really deeped it like i've been in a bit of a bubble that my social circle was very practicing brothers i was very you know closely connected to the masjid we to the events um i used to work tfl train driver two two nights a week even then a very anti-social job i'd just be by myself in my cab driving the train outside of that i was working with the brothers imran saad etc uh, alongside that we were doing the da'wah as well um so i had a very i would say um, like I, I could filter out the environment but my children can't do that like they're like sponges and even though as parents you know you, there is a lot you can do there is a lot you can do but a lot of it at the end of the day just comes down to environment and by the way this isn't something I'm just plucking out of thin air even the kuffar they accept this if you read there's a book called Atomic Habits right and the author he made a bonus chapter which is available online for free uh, on how to adopt the techniques that he mentions in the book to parenting and in there he mentions that one of the key things that you can I'll, I'll put it on the screen one of the key things as a parent that you can do is choose the environment that your children will be in and that will make them pick up habits faster because a lot of parents are like wait when I tell my son to do something they do the complete opposite right I'm sure any parent of a teenager will know that that's quite true you know I was guilty of it when I was a child and I'm pretty sure when <laughs> when my son's old enough he'll probably be doing the same thing you, you, the opposite is what goes but he said that if you put them in certain environments whatever is the the norm in that environment will become normal for them and they will start ad adopting those kind of habits like i had planned in my mind i'm gonna i'm gonna homeschool i'm gonna make sure this 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 and this but at the end of the day as i said the environment plays a massive factor like, i remember 
even though alhamdulillah I'm practicing and everything like just growing up in that environment I've, I've seen what it's like as a youngster peer pressure is a very very real thing you know I've seen I remember growing up I, I, I knew brothers who were you know children of very 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 practicing families coming from very practicing households like some of them their parents were like leaders in the community and yet they were themselves indulging in some of the craziest sins that you can think of and even them on paper they seem very practicing and I, again it's just one of those things you don't ever really know how it's going to be like and i agree look in a muslim country you're not guaranteed but you can have a higher sense of certainty you can have there's a greater chance it's a better environment on top of that like in the uk you're hearing about a stabbing and a shooting every week that like we were attending janazas regularly of people that we knew or people that knew people that we knew and it was just like yeah, it just dawned on me i was like nah man i can't do it i can't bring them up here man i remember one time i was on the on the train i fell asleep i woke up and in front of me there's two lesbians just going at it i was like what on? And for a second i thought wait like, is this am i still dreaming is this reality i literally had to get off uh, the train at the, at the next station i just said i can't do this i can't lie to you recently i was actually trying to figure out i was thinking in my mind is the uk actually a first world country like i, I actually had to google like what is it that makes a country first world and it's more to do with the economics but bro is the uk really a first world country like look at this look at the level of crime petty crime look at the cost of living and all the other issues you find there. can you read I, I don't know man that's something i guess I'll, I'll leave you guys to beef about in the comments inshallah now there were other reasons as well and i'll do a video if you guys want on the other reasons uh, for example taxes we were getting rinsed in the uk you're paying corporation tax you're paying vat tax you're paying inheritance tax you're paying you know uh, employee tax you're paying national insurance there's so many different things that you have to pay and you're just getting absolutely rinsed and now in the uk i don't know how anyone can live there and sleep at night knowing that your money is directly going towards funding genocide the money that you pay the taxes that you pay that go to the government are directly being used to fund israel to give them bombs and all the other things that they do and you're complicit with that that's the reality whether you like it or not like we were paying five figure sums in taxes and that was before all of this stuff kicked off and it just didn't sit right with us like what are we paying for a subpar education system you know you go to the schools and they flip in shove lgbt nonsense down your children's throats and by the way from this april 2024 from as young as four years old now they're going to start teaching them about about you know gender is binary you can choose what you want sorry gender is non-binary and all these other non-tentical things that they teach from the age of four from the age of four may allah protect our children on top of that the healthcare, again, lackluster, subpar. And what are you actually paying for? It's just nonsense. You're paying for bombs. You're paying for bombs and bullets to be thrown and dropped and shot at our Palestinian brothers and sisters. That's the reality, whether you like it or not. So my advice to you would be, for, for that reason alone, like, why is it so easy to boycott Starbucks and McDonald's? Which you should, by the way, if, if it's proven that they are supporting and funding the genocide, you should boycott them. But is the greater, the more direct boycott, not to just boycott the country in totality? Would that not have a bigger effect? Imagine how many millions, if not billions, that we, these Western countries would lose if the Muslims left and went back to Muslim countries. Does it not make more sense? And once again, just to clarify, I'm not saying Muslim countries are perfect i'm not even saying that they're doing enough they should be do they could be doing more and they should be doing more to help our brothers and sisters in palestine without a shadow of a doubt but my point is it's nowhere near as bad as it is in the west that's just a fact like anyone that even tries to oppose that like what is wrong with you but yeah that's a quick short video anyway i'll go into more details of these other issues i'll get quite riled up if you want i can do more videos on those topics no problem but that's a short quick summary of why i decided to leave the uk and move here to Sharjah, alhamdulillah. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. Don't forget to like the video and share it with anyone that you think of that might actually be considering moving to the UAE also, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.